What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question, dealing with exponents. So we have to evaluate each of these over here. So starting off with part A, we have negative eight in brackets to the power of two. And then actually notice in part B, we have a negative eight as well, but it's not in brackets and that's to the power of two. And this is a common scenario that comes up. And so I wanted to go over it. The difference between these over here this negative eight that's in brackets to the power of two, well, as we've shown in previous videos, if we expand this, it's just like that. It's just gonna be that negative eight multiplied by negative eight, right? Multiplied by itself twice. So negative eight times negative eight would give you positive 64. Now, what would happen if we have negative eight to the power of two. So what happens if it's not in brackets? With these kinds, you have to be really careful. Another way to rewrite this over here, it's like negative. There's like an imaginary negative one because notice that it's not the entire negative eight that's to the power of two, it's only this eight that's to the power of two. So it would be like negative and then eight to the power of two, like that. It's only this portion that's to that power. The negative is sort of on the outside. It's not part of that base of the exponent. And so the negative in front, it's like a negative one in front. And so if we follow bed mass, we have to work with exponents before we work with multiplication. And so what would happen is we would have multiple ways to do this. You could just do it right away. So eight to the power of two would give you positive 64 and then negative one times 64 would give you negative 64. Another way to show this is if we expanded this, we'd have like negative one and then we would have eight times eight, right? If we took this and expanded it here, I just did it right away. And so now we can multiply everything. Negative one times eight times eight would give us negative 64, right? So notice when it's in brackets here, we get a positive 64, but if it's not in brackets, we end up getting a negative 64. So just be careful. These are common scenarios that can come up. Um, one thing I wanna to mention too, is that let's say the exponent was odd. So let's say we had like negative two to the power of three, and then we had negative two to the power of three. Even though these are different initially, the final answer is gonna be the same because the exponent is odd. Remember when we take something negative in brackets to an odd exponent, we're gonna end up with a negative value. So this here would end up being negative two times negative two times negative two right, versus this here, we'd follow the same process here. It would be the two that's to the power of three. So we'd have negative one, and then we'd have two times two times two. But when we multiply both of these, we ultimately end up with a negative eight. All right, so if it's an odd exponent, um, then the difference between these formats don't matter as much. Right? because we would end up with the same value. But if it's an even exponent, then this is gonna end up being positive, this is gonna end up being negative. However, your teacher may still, even with an odd exponent getting this same value, they may expect you to break it down like this, right? If you get something like this versus something like this. So either way, you should know how it's broken down in order to get that final answer, all right? And then uh, let's keep moving on. So we have negative one to the power of 100. And then notice we have negative one to the power of 201. Now notice that if we were to expand these, this would take a super long time, right? Writing out negative one 100 times, negative one 201 times. But we know that, as I've mentioned before, any negative value to the power, any negative value to the power of an even, exponent is going to end up giving us a positive answer. And then any negative value to the power of an odd exponent is going to give us a negative answer, right? But notice here we're dealing with negative one. So if we just keep multiplying negative one, right? Negative one times negative one is positive one times negative one is negative one, then positive one. It's either always going to be 
negative one or positive one if the base is negative one. Okay, so if we follow this over here, we can make, this is just in general, this could be any negative value, but then we wouldn't know what this is, but we can make a specific case here if we have negative one to an even number. We know that negative one to the power of anything, as I just mentioned, it's gonna be either negative one or positive one. Well, negative one to an even number is gonna give us positive one, and then negative one to an odd number is gonna give us negative one. And so following that general rule here, negative one, notice 100, it's an even number, so we would end up with positive one, negative one to an odd number, 201 is an odd number, that would give us negative one, right, with this rule right here. So that's that. Uh, and then over here, notice that these are fairly different. Notice they're all to the power of zero, but the base is a little bit different. Now, anything, right, to the power of zero is just going to be positive one. And so notice that E and F, it's in this format because there's nothing else over here with this 3000. So it's like we could put this in brackets and that's going to be to the power of zero. Right, and so notice that both of these are in this format. We have either 3,000 to the power of zero or negative 3,000 to the power of zero, right? And no matter what's in here, that's always gonna give you positive one. But then notice that this, it's not in this format. Only this portion is, right? So it would be the same thing as here. Only the 3,000 would be to the power of zero it wouldn't be the whole negative 3,000 because it's not in brackets. And so rewriting this, it would be like negative one times 3,000 to the power of zero, like that. And using bed mass, we gotta do exponents first, so we'd have this negative one on the outside, you could even put it in brackets, then we'd have 3,000 to the power of zero, which gives us positive one, right, using this, and then negative one times positive one gives us negative one. So that would be the answer for G. Okay, so just be careful with these kinds of questions where a negative value is not in brackets. What you gotta do is sort of separate that negative one from that exponential expression, work with the exponential expression first, and then multiply whatever that answer is by that negative one in front.